Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. My mind. Um, so for those of you, if you have come to a previous one, um, this might be a slightly different conversation, but we will get to all the points that we need to get to. I don't think you can ever, uh, if, you, if you're going to have an organic conversation about something like ethics, there's no ways that you can sort of sit and sort of say, okay, well, now we're going to talk about this and now we're going to talk about that and now we're going to talk about that. I think ethics is one of those. It evolves and it changes and, and you've got to be constantly aware of your surroundings and different things come to mind at different times. I think at the moment, one of the things that's going to come to mind very much is where we're sitting in the country at the moment that we're a day before elections. And I think that brings a lot of thoughts to our mind when we're talking about ethics and ethical leadership. Um, so I... Yeah, let's see where the conversation goes. There are three parts to today's session, and um, I'm going to be keeping an eye as much as I can. It's, it's, you kind of have to multitask and be a little bit squint when you are uh, involved in a, in a webinar because I've got the question box open on my side, and as much as I'm going to, and Hannah Tanner is moderating questions in the background, um, I'm going to try and keep an eye on, on comments and questions as we go through, but we are going to sort of talk about sort of general ethics, and then we're going to talk about the code and some independence, and then we're going to talk about NOCLA at the end. It's a three-hour session, which are, at webinar, in webinar times um, can seem to be quite a daunting session. Uh, I will call for a couple of breaks, and I know that SAAA, we don't normally do breaks, but this is a live, it's a live webinar today. It's not a pre-recorded webinar. I am sitting here talking to you as much as you are sitting there listening to me. So I will try on the hour um, call for sort of like a five, 10 minute break just so we can stretch and check your phones and have a cup of coffee and um, enjoy um, a step away from your computer to come back in so that we can engage again with fresh minds. And we can, uh, you know, it's, it's a, I want you to sit and reflect, okay? The, the, it's a difficult thing to do ethics on a webinar because I often take nonverbal cues from my audience when I am uh, engaging with you. It's very interesting to watch you shuffle in your seats and watch you either smile knowingly at me or shake your head or um, look for the nearest exit to see if, you know, you can get out of there fast. Um, but with a webinar, I'm sort of talking to a screen. So that's, again, why um, any comments you might have and any thoughts you might have, if you want to pop them into the question box, um, they will be appreciated. Uh, just to give some feedback, because this is, ethics is also a, a pretty sensitive topic to talk about. It's a difficult topic to talk about because you have to put so much of yourself into it. Uh, it's not something that I can sit and hide behind a textbook or sit and hide behind standards and sort of present somebody else's words. When you're talking ethics, as much as we're talking standards and we're talking the code and we're talking, you know, principles, um, this is also very close to the bone and very close to who you are as a person. And that's the way it should be, okay? And I think that's why people often get a little bit anxious and uncomfortable when it comes to um, when it comes to talking about ethics. It's because we do have to bring things out of the dark and out of the shadowy corners and show some light on it and, and actually talk about the hard stuff. Um, one of the, the best things you can do for yourself is to have a sounding board in life so that you can, you can question things and you can... Um, query things and you can speak to people about what your challenges are because that is definitely going to be a safeguard. It's definitely going to be something that you can check yourself with and you can um, you can query yourself with because one of the things, and they're, they're, again, for those of you who have heard me before and talking on these topics, I, I do, I've got a few things that I say um, repeatedly in my life and, and when I come to ethics and, I, you know, you know so, um, psychologists will tell you that you've got to tell, say things nine, thing, nine times before people hear you. But when I train ethics or when I talk ethics or, and it's, and this is something I'm incredibly passionate about, but ethics is not something I can teach you. Okay. So first off, this is not something, I'm not here to tell you what is right and wrong. I'm not here to teach you right and wrong. That ship has sailed. Okay, that ship is long gone. There is no ways I'm here to preach. Okay, and often, just by the way, the ones that need to be preached to are not in attendance. They are, you know, it's like preaching to the choir. The people that need to hear are not here. The people that are here are already questioning and already self-reflective and already are aware of challenges and um, are open to the conversation. Ethics um, in this space is about awareness. 
Okay, I'm here to open, ask some difficult questions or, or make us sit and reflect on what's going on and for us to be aware of what we are thinking and why we're thinking it. And, you know, we've got to be, op we've got to be open minded. We've got to be aware, we've got to be willing to change our thoughts. But I can't teach you ethics. Okay. Um, ethics is something that is being developed within you way before I met you on the session today. Okay, so um, if you sit down and you listen to the Catholic priests, the Jesuit priests, they'll tell you that give me a child until he's seven and he's mine for life. Um, and I think any strong religious organization has a similar philosophy that uh, if they are very involved in your life at an early young age, you will have that entrenched in you for the rest of your life. Um, you know, that sense of Catholic guilt or that sense of whatever it is, is there with you forever um, because of what you were exposed to at a very young age. So they essentially are saying what you're taught by the age of seven stays with you for life. The social scientists came back and said, you know, after some studies, they said, no, what, you know, it's not seven, it's five. And then with further research, they came back and said, your moral compass, your idea of right and wrong, and the way that you react to right and wrong is actually established at the age of three. Okay, so let's just think about this for a second. At the age of three, you learn right from wrong. Okay, you've got a sense of right from wrong at the age of three. Now, I don't know about you, but as a parent, that scares me, okay? That scares me quite, um, quite a bit because if you, if you think about it, uh, who is looking, you know, who's looking after children, who's guiding them, who's instilling in them a sense of right and wrong by the age of three in our modern society? But why did they say three? What is it about a three-year-old that they say at this point, you can see that the moral compass is being set? Well, at three, children learn to lie. Okay, so at three, children learn to lie. They don't lie well. Okay, let's just get that right. <laughs> okay, they don't lie well, but children learn to lie. So, no, mommy, I did not eat the chocolate cake, um, says your child with chocolate smeared from ear to ear. But they knew at that point in time that if they told you that they ate the chocolate cake, when they knew they were not supposed to, that they had done something wrong. So they knew that they better make something up so that they didn't get into trouble, which meant that they had an idea of right from wrong, okay, which meant that this moral compass has been molded and formed, which means when I meet you now in life, and, you know, I, I'm not going to do a demographic test to see where you are in your life, but I'm guessing you're older than three, um, you've had a lot of exposure to various different influences from your family, from communities, from society, from your friends, from your education, um, to form a idea of right from wrong and to form your moral fiber, okay? So I can't change that, that is set. But what I can challenge you with is to ask you, is what you believe true? Is what your instinctive reaction true, okay? Because this is where we have to step in. And one of the, the, the issues that we're going to talk about in the first part of today's session is the, con you know, the, the idea of general ethics, which is that um, you've got three types of ethics that are going to be swirling around in your life. Okay? And for everything that is precious to you, I really do pray that these three elements of ethics are aligned. Okay, um, Your life will be a lot easier if you are flowing, if these three elements of ethics, these three courses of ethics are flowing in the same direction. Because if they're flowing in the same direction, you will be a lot, it will be a lot easier in your life. So you're going to have your personal ethics. So who are you as a person? How did you grow up? What was your background? What were your influences? Um, and what is it that you believe right from wrong to be? Um, bearing in mind there are people that make it their lifelong studies to study ethics. So you've got your personal beliefs, okay? That's one school of thought. Then you're going to take that across to your professional beliefs because you are part of an accounting profession. And accountants have a certain ethical code of conduct, okay? We have a code of how we behave and how we need to work and how we need to view things and how we need to see things. And I really do hope that your personal beliefs align with your professional beliefs. 
And if you're thinking about this, uh, it does sound like the beginning of a bad joke, but I've got two really good friends, two of my best mates, one's an attorney and one's a psychiatrist. Okay, and I'm not even joking. This is definitely the truth. And we go on park runs and we have wine and we chat. And can you imagine the conversations that we have over a couple of glasses of wine? I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.